Hello and welcome to Downtime Activities. My name is Matthew and this is the Help Action, a series where I break down 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons rules or concepts and give you kind of the nitty gritty of how they work, as well as advice on how best to use or change them to make them work the best that they can in your game. Today we're going to be going over falling, falling in D&D and how it works, how fast you fall, how hard you fall, what damage you take, and how to change and use those rules to make them make sense and make your games better. So let's jump into it. All right, let's talk falling in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. To begin with, I'm going to kind of go over and break down all the rules of how falling works, as well as some of the optional rules that can be applied to falling rules. And I'll be going over my advice for how to change or use these to get the most out of them in your game. The basics are this. You will take 1d6 damage for every 10 feet that you fall to a maximum of 20d6. This means once you've fallen 200 feet or more, the damage is going to stay the same. This is kind of where the problem often starts for people. 20d6 damage is quite a bit. It averages to 70 with a minimum of 20 and a maximum of 120, which is a pretty considerable amount, but later game can be pretty negligible for somebody falling, falling potentially thousands and thousands of feet. I have some opinions on this and how you can kind of change this to, to make the rules make more sense, but we'll get to that later. Moving on, there's not really specific rules about the rate at which you fall. There is an optional rule that you can use that states that basically when falling, you immediately descend 500 feet. So when your fall begins, in that moment, you will fall 500 feet and will only have time to take a reaction for things like feather fall. At that point, if you are not hitting the ground, if there's further to fall, each round you will uh, descend another 500 feet, giving you a round to take actions or bonus actions to potentially cast something that requires that sort of thing, like a fly spell on yourself, uh, in that time to not hit the ground and to stop that descent. A brief aside, flying creatures uh, can fall as well if knocked prone or if they otherwise lose the ability to move. Uh, unless they have uh, the hover ability or other things that can hold them aloft like certain types of magic. And this isn't really applied, or at least falling while being a flying creature, if you are knocked prone, rules as written, aren't really applied in any sort of meaningful way. Uh, obviously if you can fly, you're not going to fall, but if you're knocked prone, technically rules as written, you just fall 500 feet immediately when knocked prone because you are no longer able to fly and will only have a reaction to take there. There's an optional rule in Xanathar's Guide uh, that kind of is meant to show what it's like if a creature is knocked prone or in some other way begins falling but still has their flying speed, their speed isn't reduced to zero. And this optional rule lets you subtract that flying speed from the damage as far as uh, how many tens of feet the creature falls. So for instance, if a creature falls 100 feet, but has a 60 foot fly speed, uh, they're just knocked prone so they fall down, then they would only take 4d6 instead of 10d6, because you subtract 60 from the 100 feet, leaving only 40 feet that the creature falls. This is kind of that wild flapping of wings or whatever to kind of try and slow the descent. And this is useful for that kind of niche situation. Um, the rule does go on to also say that they can use half of their speed on a later round, um, to no longer be falling by essentially standing up from that prone condition, uh, they'd use half of their flying speed. But that's only going to be after they've descended that 500 feet immediately as they start to fall. So if they're falling less than 500 feet, they won't have the opportunity to do that. This is an okay optional rule to kind of shake things up with the flying creature, give them some sort of benefits when falling because they're flyers. Uh, however, it's really only helpful if a flying creature is knocked prone but is still conscious, which is a pretty niche situation to happen and won't come up very often. One other bit of rules to discuss, uh, or more lack thereof, is falling into fluid, falling into water. Rules is written, there is really no effect based on whether you're falling into water or onto hard concrete. And physics, you know, following along with that, that makes some sense. If falling, once you're hitting terminal velocity and you're falling super far, uh, hitting water is pretty much the same as hitting concrete. But oftentimes in shorter falls, 
the logic of this does not really make sense. I mean, rules is written, this would mean that jumping off of a 10 foot diving board into a pool would do likely a D6 of damage to you. And that doesn't really track for me. That does not make a whole lot of sense. So that's kind of the breakdown of how the different rules or lack thereof work mechanically. Now I'd like to go over falling in a 5e game and how I think best you can take these rules and use parts of them to make it make sense, uh, but also make it more functional in your games. To begin with, when falling a massive distance, as a DM, you have a decision to make. You have to decide if you want your game to be more of a realistic game or a more superhero-y game once the party gets to high levels. What I mean by this is many high-level characters can shrug off a fall from massive heights with these rules, even if it's a 2,000-foot fall from an airship, they would likely leave with little more in the grand scheme of things than some bumps and bruises because they have massive amounts of hit points, especially some of the more martial classes. Uh, if they take that average of 70, that's a considerable amount of damage, but not even enough to bloody a lot of these high level brawny characters. If you like this superhero aspect to a game and you want your barbarian to be able to leap off and fall a thousand feet colliding into the earth and survive in the process, maybe not even too badly roughed up, just keep the rules as they are. This is totally fine. I have no problem with this. And in a lot of high level, big epic fantasy games, this can kind of, while not really make sense, fit the aesthetic and the feel you're going for. However, if you find this as unrealistic and, and coming up in your games where your players just disregard and don't care about falling at all, uh, you can make some changes. And the, the main one I would do is to choose a height that you think is as high up as a character should be able to fall from before that uh, maximum 20d6 is no longer into effect. And instead, if a character falls from that height and does nothing to slow themselves, they are immediately downed. They're at zero and making death saves. I wouldn't make it instant death because that will feel a little brutal, if you, especially if your campaign takes place in on airships or in high places and there's lots of opportunity for this. This will give a chance for death saves and healing spells to make sure that the character just doesn't die because they fell. Uh, but it makes it matter. You're not going to have that character just willy-nilly jumping thousands of feet to rocky bottoms uh, and not care about the fall damage because it'll overall be not that much. This is a decent rule for making that realism kind of come out a little bit more. Moving on, when a character falls, as a DM, I would pretty much always give them a reaction to try and save themselves. This can be, if they're falling remotely close to anything or anyone, this could be something like a deck save, potentially a very challenging one, to grab onto that thing or that individual to keep themselves from plummeting. Typically, unless you have a specific feature like Featherfall as the spell, uh, there's not a whole lot of reactions out there that are existing mechanically in the game that a player could use to save themselves. But falling, I like the idea of them getting a chance, even if it's a small one, to make that crazy save or skill check to do something to save themselves. And rules is written, you just don't get that opportunity. Uh, especially if you do that 500 foot immediate descent, it's not very often that a character is going to fall further than 500 feet. So having nothing but a reaction between I'm falling to I've hit the ground uh, feels a little unfair and unfun. So I like the idea of the characters falling, but they're a character who, you know, has rope over their shoulder on their backpack. They can make a last ditch effort to try and toss it if it's got a grappling hook on one end of it and catch something, a rock edge on a cliffside. Uh, right at the last second to, to maybe lessen the blow and swing and hit the rock wall instead of hitting the ground itself. Something like that, just giving that, oh no, maybe I've got a shot to save myself from this fall sort of moment, uh, especially at earlier levels, I think can be a pretty big game changer and make it feel a little less brutal and punishing to fall. Furthermore, I would pretty regularly give skill checks to reduce or avoid damage uh, when a creature is not falling from a massive height. What I mean by this is things like an athletics check to dive gracefully into a pool of water from 60, 50 feet up, or, or maybe a acrobatics check when you're tumbling off of a 
30 foot tall roof that the character could kind of roll with the, the landing and, and not end up taking that damage. I would use these regularly at these kind of mid to lower height falls, uh, whether it's removing the damage altogether or just having it, something along those lines, I think can really help make the whole system feel a little more balanced and logical and less punishing. Lastly, I would like to discuss falling into water. Uh, there, like I said, there's not by rules as written any rules for falling into water. Falling into water is the same as falling into anything else. Uh, however, Jeremy Crawford was somebody who responded to kind of questions about this in the past. And, and his response was that typically in his games, he just halves the damage uh, whenever a creature falls into water. And I think this is a pretty good way to go. We don't have to get into the physics of everything, like I said before, falling into the water and falling onto rock is pretty similar once you get to certain heights. But for the sake of this being a game and being fun and, and characters wanting to make that big leap off a cliff into a, down a waterfall or something like that to get away from the pursuing enemy, uh, those moments are cool and you don't want them to just hit the ground and die because it's technically they would or whatever. I think having that um, water dampening that effect is a good way to go. I would go a little further than this. I would do having the damage whenever a creature lands in water. Um, I would also just ignore the first 30 feet of falling when falling into water. I think that logically, a I, there's Olympic diving boards that are 30 and 40 feet tall. It, it would just make sense that if you're jumping 30 feet into water, you're not gonna take any damage. 40, now you're taking 10 or now you're taking uh, the 10 feet worth of damage, 1d6. If you do 50, now it's 2d6. But 30 is just immediately cut off. It's run from that 30 on that you would go up to the 20d6 worth of falling, just because it makes more sense to me. I also think you could expand off of this and probably ignore the first 10 feet of falling damage on land. Um, this is not a necessity, but I think oftentimes makes a lot of sense as a 10 foot fall, unless you're fairly clumsy, uh, is pretty unlikely to make you like roll an ankle and take damage uh, in the real world. That being said, it totally could happen, but that's where my previous advice comes in. Often you wouldn't need to ignore this 10 feet. I would just make it like a DC 10 acrobatics check to land gracefully. If they fail that, then you throw that D6 and it's like you land, you're still, you're not killing the character with that fall likely, but they're, they're tumbling a little bit and they're rolling an ankle. Something along those lines I think can also work well. In conclusion, falling rules work fairly well overall, but there's some stuff that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me. I think that if you want a game that's not overly punishing, but feels fairly realistic, then you need to make a height at which the damage doesn't matter anymore. Players are downed if they fall from that height. And I think that you need to be very lenient with opportunities to avoid falling. Uh, things like those, those last minute saves or skill checks and reducing some of that damage depending on what they're falling into or what roles they can make to try and do that. Uh, the point of the game is to have fun. Falling should be a real risk, but there also should be fun, oh no, save myself moments that come from that fall. And, and that's only really going to be achieved if you go outside the rules a little bit and give other options to your characters. That has been the rules for falling in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, as well as my opinion on how to change and use them in your game. Hope you found this useful. If there's anything I missed, please feel free to throw that down in the comments below. If there's any other topics, rules, things that you want to more fully understand or get advice on, please suggest anything you'd like us to do a help action on in the future. Now go forth, slay dragons, sling spells, roll dice, and enjoy your downtime activities.